it. So I had yeah, four to, chapters I, in right yeah. now. Yeah, Rolo, what do you think about, uh, at least for us, there's a sizable percentage of the guys we work with that are just socially awkward, very awkward socially. Mm -hmm. Social skills Are, versus not actually it, being functionally autistic. That's what I'm wondering, um, if we're not no, blending no, yeah. those two together. So I think it's that, larger than the percentage yeah, so I said. So I, I try to decipher, do you have a problem with permission, mm -hmm. giving yourself permission, or do you have a problem where I literally, the, a girl is saying, get the fuck away from me, and you can't tell she's oh, saying that's a good mm -hmm. distinction. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I look yeah. for that distinction. A lot of times it is mom and dad when you're growing up, shut the fuck up, sit in the corner, stop making noise, yeah. stop making noise, mm -hmm. stop playing, stop having fun, stop having fun, put mm -hmm. the fucking video game down. No creativity, none, yeah. none, mm -hmm. study. You're going to become a doctor. And their whole childhood was that then they grow up with me and i'm like hey bro slap the table say let's fucking go and they're like let's fucking go <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, you're right. let's go bro so yeah, for real and then I, I played the replay yeah, back yeah. for him i'm like do you see the difference between how you did it and i did it that is that's, we, gave our, we gave ourselves permission <laughs> oh boy I'd say I, I wrote, you probably read the intro to my fifth book. Of course. And in that intro, I specifically put that, uh, that section in there as I said, look, game is not going to cure your social awkwardness. Mm. Learning game is not going to like suddenly make you normal if you are diagnosed with like Asperger's syndrome or aut autism, because that's uh, the reason I have to put that in now is because guys will come and they'll go, I gotta learn games so I can get a girlfriend. And they're, what they're really saying is, I need better social skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why, so when I hear, and I know these guys in the chat and everybody else and everybody who fucking hates us on the black pill doomer side of everything, uh, oh, it's all those pickup artists. Okay, pick up, disclaimer. pickup is fucking dead, okay? Mm -hmm. If your idea of a pickup or what game is looks like mystery from 2004 with black fingernail polish, a feather boa, a big fucking top hat, and like elevator boots or whatever the fuck it is, you are, that was like 20, literally 20 years ago, okay? Yeah. So fucking catch up to where we're at right now. When we refer to game, it's social skills is what, it really, what is. it really boils down to. And the reason why you can commodify it now is because there's so many guys who don't have social skills. Just straight conversation well, you know, skills do like, lack in, in the group that we, no, you yeah. know, that's what we focus on. I noticed a lot of guys coming from the church look like they are on the autism schedule the spectrum because mm -hmm. they lack social skills they lack it from a conviction standpoint like i can't look at her that way i shouldn't talk to her yeah. oh my god i'm sinning i'm they lusting mix it, they mix it and it's like the they don't yeah. yeah they mess it up I'm like no bro you just appreciating a hot girl like it, she's hot young people are, are such retarded too because i i was in florida with my mom and every morning we would walk around this lake I said, you know, like, watch this, mom. I'm just gonna wave to every different demographic that watches past, like, walks past us. And people who are like in their 40s and 50s, they're just like, oh, hi, yeah, good morning, mm -hmm. nice to see you, great weather today. But all the social, the, the younger people were so like socially awkward, like, you know, face mm -hmm. buried in their phone, like, af like afraid to make eye contact, thought I was up to something, and we're just two people walking in the park. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these young people, I just think because we're all grow up with these, you know, social media devices in front of us 24/7. Mm -hmm. They learn. They lost the ability to be like, "Hey, we're, we're two people in, in a real room time. having mm -hmm. a real conversation. Mm -hmm. Have to look at you and like deal with the repercussions of what you what I say in real life." Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Don't this, have is the a, this is a really good one. Thanks, Iron Disciples are good friends of mine. You need to get yeah, in touch with I them. Yeah, I reached out to them actually not too right. long ago. So, um, them. they said, "What percentage of this is for everybody? What percentage of guys consuming red pill content do you think are actually trying to improve themselves versus just self loathing and watching red meat on f on Fresh and Fit?" They're just there for the entertain hate follows. They're there for their what percentage you think are actually come to find the space and they go, I'm gonna listen to these guys, I'm gonna try to improve. Twenty percent. I would say yeah, I was gonna say I'm saying twenty percent. Fifteen. Uh did you, I guess I would cut a cup for you. Normal distribution, the middle sixty eight point yeah, two seven percent. I'm trying to I'm trying then, not then, to be literal. And then you have the sixteen percent here. Mm -hmm. I say sixteen percent. And the eighty four percent is like one and a half standard deviations. So eight sixteen percent are actually trying to uh uh, improve themselves and the one and a half standard deviations, which would be 84% are not. That's mm -hmm. what I would, that's yeah. I, would I, I would say a good assessment. the top end of the bell curve. Yes. Okay. So you have, so you have the middle, the middle plus and minus yeah. one Sigma. And then once we get out to two and three, four Sigma, the, the top end is doing it. The bottom end is like, they aren't even leaving their house. Mm -hmm. And then there's the middle 68% who is like, Oh yeah, let's watch fresh and fit three Oh fours. And then they go to jerk off. Like guys, I'm gonna tell you a story. You remember when Sonia Mallory, the, the week that we and I, he and I went on this girl, Sonia Mallory lives here in Vegas. She fucking films porn with her husband. Uh, you remember I told you about no, no, it no. covered in tattoos, deep voice. She's from, she's from Montreal, right? Huge fake boobs, real pretty blue eyes, whatever. Love her. She, she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's on there and she's, she's talking or whatever. And she's straight up like, yeah, I'm here for the abuse from you fucking guys because I want 
OnlyFans subscribers. <laughs> I'm sitting there yeah. afterwards. I was like, Sonia, I got to ask you a question. How many new OnlyFans subscribers do you have right now from when you went on Fresh and Fit? She's like, 2,000. Oh, dude, 000. dude, that's not 2,000. That's not 2,000 followers on Instagram. That is 2,000 so, OnlyFans yeah. subscribers. That could be 500 grand for her mm -hmm, over the yeah. course of a year. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, it's just crazy when you see that. She's like, yeah, they can say whatever the fuck they want about me. I don't care. But here's the funny thing. What were they saying? Three or four, ho, ho. But 2,000 of you are following her now? What mm -hmm. the fuck? Like, dude, that's the point I'm trying to make. Right. That's why I think it's 84% of them are doing nothing mm -hmm. to improve themselves, and 16% of them are. I would, I would, that's why I was thinking about it with our definitions, the bell distribution curve is a good way to analyze this so one standard deviation above is actually trying to improve themselves sort of the 15 percent roughly we right. all agreed upon yeah. then there's the center where i would say yeah 304 is entertainment value and yeah i'd like to maybe pick up some red pill game mm -hmm. then what concerns me is the the last uh, the tail on the what would be the left side of the bell distribution curve i think they're using it not just as an excuse but almost a really general ideology yeah where a, a, a genuine they want it to a, be a, a genuine, philosophy yeah a they genuine want misogyny it against mm -hmm. women yeah and mm -hmm. so that's where your your um your what is the guy that shot up or ran people over so, so yeah mm -hmm. let, let, let's discuss that the 2015 yeah. a study yeah, yeah, yeah. came out that showed that violent video games do not make children violent Correct. they say they, they mm -hmm. tested that red pill in this whole thing i don't think it makes people misogynistic what i think is mm -hmm. people are born their stimulus right. in their early life that causes them to be misogynistic plus possibly genetically low levels of empathy and then they look for a place to go and the woke nature doesn't fit what they want but there's an ideology here in red pill where there's a, mm -hmm. guy, a couple of guys who say some irresponsible stuff and now they become subsets of red pill that are exceptionally misogynist right. but the point is red pill does not make them misogynist it's just like what i said before cartel mm -hmm. bosses are always sociopaths because the first cartel boss that isn't a sociopath he dies. So mm -hmm. Cartel bosses select for sociopathy. And what I think is, in this case, people who are already misogynists, they're just finding this programming. It's the programming is not making them do. Right. There's no, I've never heard Rollo say one thing that he hates women. But there nope. are people out there who will swear to God that he says this. Yeah, because I speak the language of empiricism. And when you only understand emotionalism, it's always mm -hmm. going to sound like anger, hate. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't agree with that. And I want to get, I don't, I don't speak the language of empiricism. So he, but that's where I live in, in, emotional world and so therefore somebody speaking a different language he must be bad there, yeah. there's well, another thing yeah, i need to be told how to feel about this guy so who says we uh, we hate 304s glenn we love oh, yeah. Yeah. We have a whole, Dude, thank you are you thank you whole podcast. We love thank you we did a whole podcast down. saying that like whole every podcast. guy loves hoes you all love hoes no not every guy them. no no brian, guys brian from guys brian who, from whatever guys, podcast does not like guys hoes. who get guys <laughs> who have sex on a regular basis love even if i'm not sleeping with them when they're fucking when i'm at a party and there's girls like dancing just shaking their ass and i'm in a hot tub yeah. with my girlfriend and have other girls blast. are acting wild i'm having a blast i don't give a fuck i'm like why don't you guys find god at no point <laughs> no, i'm looking I'm at my you. girl i'm looking i'm looking at my girl i'm like which one do you want babe which one are we taking uh, home so that's funny. what i'm yeah, doing let me let me throw something out there because when you're because i get this all the time it's, it's one thing to be called like uh you're 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 a hater or you're angry it's mm -hmm. always it's truthful anger i've got that for so fucking long right but it's still truthful, okay? Yep, so yeah. where am I wrong? That's number one. The other thing is I got, and I was I was hoping I was gonna go head to head with Imran Ahmed on uh, Dr. Phil about this topic, but we never got around to it, but I'm seeing it make another uh, sort of comeback right now, that we're radicalizing the, the, the incels of the world. Mm -hmm. We're, they're all gonna be a murderous rampaging, you know, uh, you're gonna go, yeah, go take a leak. <laughs> um, but they're all gonna turn into murderous rampaging, you know, uh, radicals. And there's an there's an FBI study mm -hmm. about like you know uh, the manosphere and guys like Andrew Tate yeah. are radicalizing today's youth just like you know the what the Arab Spring or something like they're all they're all sexless they have no prospects and so they were just ripe for the picking for like Boko Haram they're, or they're, something they're like missing that, the point right? they're they're radicalized because they're sexless. Mm. Not because of red pill. Oh, I they keep they keep they, keep, they yeah. keep they're forgetting the point. Eighty percent of men on dating apps are deemed unattractive. Mm -hmm. That's why they're being radicalized. But, so I got I have a study for that actually. Yeah. Political radicalization may be often fueled by obsessive compulsive disorder. This sure. is from from a, a, a psychological study. Okay, um, across four ideological samples of the United States. Uh, Republican, Democrat, and Muslim, 
we found direct effects between obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms and radical intentions, as well as uh, indirect effect of OCD on radical intentions via obsessive passion. You just said That's that, right? Okay. Even after controlling for potential clinical confounds like adverse childhood experiences, uh, ex uh, anxiety, depression, substance abuse, these effects remained robust, implying that OCD plays a significant role in the formation of violent ideological intentions and opening up new uh, avenues for the treatment and prevention of violent extremism, okay? So were they already fucked up before they found the Manosphere? Were they already fucked up before they found the Democrats, the Republicans, their religion, whatever it is? Or was it the religion that fucked? Was it Marilyn Manson that convinced them to go and kill everybody? Was it Judas yeah. Priest who did, who yeah. convinced them with their violent lyrics to go and, and uh, kill their parents? Rollo, it was Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I, I have yes. to admit, I'm old you enough know what? to know. You, you, start doing you, the I, you could Roll make a dice. case for fifth edition. I, I might give that to you. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting is like, they don't, like, I got articles here, and this is mm. from a book, um, it's called uh, the Justice Against, or The War Against Male Justice, right? Mm -hmm. And here's a quote, right? Uh, Jocelyn Friedman says, divorcing masculinity from misogyny needs to start younger. Traditional masculinity needs to be limited because it's gonna be harmful to us by our boys. This is a quote, this is, I mean. Well, yeah, what they're defining as traditional ma ma yeah. masculinity, yeah. Yeah, it's like, and that was from The Guardian yeah. in March of 2018. It's like, they're, they're a push to try to label anything masculine misogynistic. Toxic. Yeah. I, yeah. I do believe so it's that's just, on just, purpose. You know, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, definitely. There's a slant of Marxism with feminism, and, and now it's mm -hmm. merged with this this Faustian theory or this Malthusian theory, you know, about population, population. control. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let me roll this one out here. Uh, John Conchar says, this panel has been immensely helpful to me, specifically Cappy, MLD, and Rolo. 21 years old that uh, and I lost 40 pounds of fat. Wow. Awesome. And put on 20 pounds of muscle in the last two years. No debt. 20,000 in savings so far. Thank you for my unplugging. Don't you have debt? From Does that, that guy sound like he's angry and pissed off right. and is OCD and is going to be like a potential radical? He just hates the world. Does that sound? <laughs> no. like but I, and I hate you have to, to, you have to